Hello, I'm Sharon Howard. I'm going to be reading from Ulrike Dresner's latest novel, Die Verwandelten. It's the third in a trilogy of novels about the subjects of war and exile and displacement. And uh, this one concentrates on the women's experience of war. And it follows several generations of women over the period of 100 years. It moves around in time. And here it's uh, we're in 1945. Um, the time of the siege of Breslau, um, when uh, the city was ordered to be defended at all costs and um, civilians were forced to leave. And among those were Elsa and her daughter Reni, who here are returning uh, from Czechoslovakia, having been raped by Russian soldiers. And uh, Elsa, the mother, has had her jaw broken and they're in a very awful state. So they're just approaching Breslau here. The road signs say Breslau 35 kilometres. We've been warned to expect mines. We try to avoid the paths. The place we sneak past is a half-rotted fish, its blackened bones gaping into space. We long for fire, for the fire at home. Instead there's the smell. After so many days and nights, the smell. The body wants to stop breathing. It's cold. The cold is worse than the hunger. Snap, snap. You don't want to move. When we sit, everything goes numb, our bodies go to sleep, but we don't. Facial expressions desert you. You can no longer laugh, only deep down inside. Brasel is called a fortress now, Josef's parents said. They told us how tight the ring around the city has been drawn. Before it, dead bodies lie in ditches or ground into the earth. Duck and dive to stay alive. We are approaching from the south and need to enter from the north. Up there, the Russians have been confident of their cause since January, and hence more careless. The fighting is in the south. I break it down for Elsa. I don't mean the plan. We don't have one. We feel our way, going by instinct. We have grown thin, black as the shadows in the forest. I mean our last apple. I chew, I spit. We are disgusting. We are past repugnance. We are Reni and Elsa from another world. Mother and daughter, woman and woman. We watched each other go through it. I knelt on the ground beside her. Better view, sweetie, they said. They said it in Russian. What we didn't understand, we soon did. Mother Day lay next to me, the rifle butt, eyes closed. Then it went dark. Remember this, hold me tight. Keep my mouth shut, bite, bite my tongue off. We follow the road eastwards until we can loop round to the northwest. We have the map in our heads. We daren't get it wrong. Breslau looms in the distance, not beckoning, but smoking. Elsa swallows. Quiet, Mama, quiet, with your half-fractured jaw before the fracturing city. Shrunken Reini lies inside me, quiet as a mouse. When I wake up, Elsa leans against my side, her face flushed. She turns up the corners of her mouth, flushes deeper, because she can open and close her lips again, because she is glad. She feels better, she doesn't need to say so. Under the fir twigs in the hollow, it is warm from the stillness. Mama's hand rests on the blanket over my arm. The thing that's beating is my heart. My whole body is beating towards her. I was meant to take care of you. I wanted to protect you. And now look, she says. Frida and Gustl carried on, but Mama decided to turn back with me, back to Marov. It wasn't a calculation, but a longing for our previous life. Force of habit, a crumb of comfort, perhaps part calculation too. I could see that Mama had grown smaller, that she was limping and wanted to return. I can't lead you any more. You did protect me, I tell her. You're in a worse state than me, isn't that proof enough? Don't you worry, I say. Shrunken Reni is curled up inside me like a wintering animal. She is sleeping herself better. Elsa doesn't believe me. Perhaps I don't even believe myself. What is it exactly, this curling thing? No woman bleeds when she's fleeing for her life. Not in this cold, under this strain, with so little food. Elsa isn't either. I decide the only thing that's growing inside me is my bones, my muscles, my brain. The first light of day begins to shimmer. We are lying at the edge of a field. Sh shades of green and brown unfurl as far as the eye can see. We awake from a light sleep, even me, who should be sleeping deeply and growing. The last wisps of dream web fade away. Just Elsa and me in the world. No one else. The scent of pine needles rising from the ground. The sheet of dawn is still stretched taut, glistening with fresh ice crystals over the snow-filled hollows. In our eyes is a faint smile, the smile that comes before fear, before we go back to being who we are now. 
We strapped the blankets to the rucksacks. Two more days' march, scurrying through a former combat zone. There are abandoned tanks in the fields. Animal corpses attract flocks of scavenging birds that rise into the air as we approach. Bomb church towers, an almost familiar sight. The moon shines cold and clear over the roofless rows of houses as we set off. We will lie by the order in the summer, Mama. We'll bathe at Sand Island, stride over every bridge, stroll along the quay by the university. The city will be destroyed, but the mellow light of Breslau will greet us. It will be in flames, Elsa says. But they will be put out, I say. In ruins, she says. Better than nothing, I say. We'll be home again, like in the old days, I say. We'll never be us again, she says. But we'll be home, back in our own nest, I say. We'll remember, she says. It will eat us up, she says. It will build us up, I say. <laughs>